Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So seeing as today is all about baby ponies, I thought it was rather fitting to do this intro with Etty who has gotten absolutely huge. She's nearly 13 hands, which is just ridiculous because you're still an absolute baba baloo. But in case you hadn't guessed from the thumbnail and title of this video, we are going to be talking about two buckskin mares, AKA Brinny and Bear, because they obviously went off earlier this season to try and get in full for a second time. And I've waited and waited and waited to do this video, but it is finally time. Hey Mill, you're gonna provide some uh, sound effects for me there. <laughs> anyway, before we get going, there was one thing. I need to show you my new hair, guys. I don't know if I like it or not. <laughs> I had like the biggest chop ever. So yeah, let me know what you're thinking. Hey, so I was really hoping you'd get up and show everyone how big you are now. Look, gives you a bit of an idea. Look how long she is. When she's next to Millie, there's like obviously a height difference, but not a crazy amount. Are you gonna get up? Oh yes, yes, yes. It's like David Attenborough, guys. Come on. Also, probably should have skipped her out before filming this, but you know, didn't want to disturb you. Oh, you're so pretty. Let's get up, boo. Well done. Betty, mate, get me demonetized. Sorry, guys. In your own time, it's any time today. Fine, everyone loves this. Wow, well done. Right, look at you. <laughs> the mane has gotten crazy long and she also hates having it brushed. She likes like having her body brushed, not her mane. So that's why it looks so scraggly. Coat's had a little bit of change. We should probably do this in the light, shouldn't we? Can I go around the other side? She's uh, she's only got on sassier with age. Look at that, guys. Eddie, can you stand right next to her so we can see the height difference? So Millie is about 14.1, and that's Eddie next to her. <laughs> and Eddie is, what, four and a half months old? <laughs> oh, you can be a big girl. Right, madam. Shall we go and find the other two golden ponies and talk about them? Right, I'm leaving the barnet down now because it's really hard to tie up. Now it's this length. So into the field, because that's where both buckskins are residing. And we're gonna start with Brinny because she came back first. I feel like I've been so quiet about Brinny. I didn't even say anything about her coming back on Instagram, but I learned my lesson from both of these guys not playing ball last year or this year with getting in full so decided to not say too too much until we have all of the details oh girls the flies are so bad i'm also going to get bombarded so here we have brinny brew trying to get all the flies off of her bless her so if you remember brinny went to be put in foal last year too and i'm going to try and say this welsh name sinhydrophore heathcliff AKA Harry, you're not Brinny. So he's a Polino Welsh D, absolutely gorgeous. And we loved him so much that we thought we'd have a second attempt this year because last year we knew it would be a bit hit and miss because we didn't actually scan before Brinny left. So we only had one shot and it was kind of just luck of the draw. And sadly, when we did scan her, there was nothing in there. However, this year, Brinny went away for a little bit longer. <laughs> She's just found a thistle to eat. And I don't know if you guys can tell from that belly back there, but when Brinny came back, she was actually scanned in full, which is very, very exciting. And we have taken extra precautions this year. So she had the two week scan, which was good. She had the four week heartbeat scan, which was also very good. And then lastly, she had the 60 day scan, which is kind of a safer one, barely below. 
So once they have the 60 day one, that's kind of when you're past the most fragile stage of pregnancy. I have learned from last time that every stage of pregnancy is fragile, but the 60 day is often the one that you're like a little bit safer. Oh baby, these flies. And yeah, the 60 day one was also successful. They tried to gender scan her, but the foal was in the wrong place. It was like upside down. So we don't know the gender, but I'm actually quite pleased about that because I love a surprise. So yeah, I can confirm that little Brinny Brew is expecting 2023. Now, on to the next buckskin pony who is hiding right now. Firstly guys, what do you think of that belly? Is that a pregnant belly or is that a, I've been worked in nearly a year belly. See both sides. Comment down below now what you think of Teddy Bear. Last chance to comment because it is now story time. So I'm sure everyone knows the story of Bear's attempted pregnancy. So last year I tried to put her to the gorgeous Britannia Royal, who I'm still very, very much in love with. However, Bear being Bear decided to throw her an absolute spanner in the works and absorb her foal somewhere after the heartbeat scan. We still don't know when. Um, and then proceeds to trick not only us, but several vets along the way that she was in fact in foal still and just being a maiden, not showing it too much. So this year we decided to take the fresh semen approach. Um, we were just recommended by vets and stud owners and from past experience to be honest, that it would be easier because she's a maiden and because she's proven to be a little bit difficult to get in foal, it was kind of a safer bet. And I'm very much hoping to use Ron on her, assuming all goes well. So we decided to go with the gorgeous Don Dante. He's a stallion that we've known from about two years old, an epic dressage stallion. There's a video all about him if you want to find out more. And Sharon from New Barnstead got to work with a lovely vet that we've used again since I was very, very young. And yeah, they attempted the impossible. What a grumpy girl. And the reason she's so grumpy it's because Bear's actually in foal. And Bear's not too happy about it, are you? <laughs> so, again, all the precautions have been taken. She wasn't very easy. Um, can you, Bear, come on. Come on now. I know the hormones are all over the place, but seriously, you look awful. Um, yeah, so she was very easy. We basically had to flush her a lot, which, again, you know I'm really bad at explaining this stuff, but they get like manky liquid, bodily fluids in their uterus. And we figured out that that was the reason that the kind of embryos and they are embryos once they've been inseminated, aren't they? I don't really know, but basically that was drowning the fetus or slash embryo. And that kind of seemed to be like the turning point after we'd done that. I mean, guys, there was a lot more to it. This is me trying to explain it in absolute layman's terms. <laughs> but essentially Bear had like a nice new and improved clean ovary. So we inseminated her and then another turning point was that she went on to regimate. So I've never used regimate before, which is weird because I've had literally so many mares in my life but never had them on regimate. It's pretty toxic stuff to help with seasons if anyone doesn't know what it is. So we put her on that, which I thought was so bizarre because I was like, surely when you're trying to get a mare in foal, like you don't want to mess with that stuff. But obviously the vets and Sharon know a lot better than I. So she went on to regimate to stop her re-seasoning, <laughs> which is weird. And to also like calm her insides down because I think all this fluid was going in because she was getting mixed signals from her hormones or something like that. Anyway, we inseminated her. She went straight on Regimate. She passed the two week test. She passed the four week heartbeat test. And then we have recently just had a 63 day scan, which shows there is still a foal in there. 
So obviously I'm absolutely buzzing, but at the same time, I feel like I'm very much more level-headed this year because we've had that kind of rubbish experience and it will be a lot less painful if I gear myself up beforehand. So it is all looking good with both, both little buckskins. Pretty sure that buckskin's not done. I don't know what to call them. It's looking good for the pair of them. So Brinny is due mid-May and Bear is due about two weeks after her. So going to be end of May, potentially early June. And we should have two crazy little Welshies slash half Welshies running around this field next year. Hey Teddy. It is so good to have you back. Yes it is. Are you pleased to be back? Are you pleased to be back Bubba? relatively pleased she's certainly stroppier than she was this time last year so hopefully that's a good sign although i did hear somewhere down the grapevine that bears are meant to get nicer when they're in fall but you know bears just a sassy little demon <laughs> so she, you do what you please but yeah i'm sorry it's taken so long to get this update out to you but I was just very conscious that I was always going to fill you in in whatever happened but I kind of felt like I wanted to have a final answer for you guys so I just wanted to wait until we'd had those 60 day scans all cleared and the vets had looked at them both and were happy and then I can kind of give you a final answer for this stage. Like I said, things can still change. But please just keep your fingers crossed for Bear, Brinny and I that we have two little cute healthy babies and of course uh -huh. two healthy mamas. Don't, come on, don't be nasty. Time to play. Who's chunkier? That is Bear. They've gotten so similar looking. And Brinny here. I think Bear's fatter. <laughs> Even though Bear's further behind. I mean, the majority of this bulk is purely chub. At the minute, it's so hard to keep you Welshies slim, isn't it? They've got a little track system here, as you can see. But you survive on thin air. There we have it. The update, the long awaited update. I'm sorry for leaving it so long guys, but I'm sure you'll understand. Anyway, I will certainly keep you in the loop with preggy mare updates from here on out. There's not a lot more to do. They're gonna have their EVH jabs again, like they did last year. <laughs> there, you just had three ones that, you know, were a complete waste of money because there wasn't actually a fall in there, but that's fine. And then they will, of course, be going away again to stud to actually have their foals because we are not capable of that. I am also hoping to do a how much does it cost to get your horse in foal video using Bear as the worst example in the world because it might be good to shed some light on how much it actually costs. I mean, we could do you and Millie as a comparison because you're literally chalk and cheese. Millie was so easy. So look out for that video. And all that's left to say is I live, laugh, love you. Thank you so much for still taking an interest in this monster's pregnancy updates. I can't believe that well over a year from when I first said that we we're gonna put in foal, I'm still babyless and filming these videos, but Hey ho, that is the game of trying to breed horses after all. Hope you enjoyed it guys and I can't wait to meet Brinny and Bears Falls next year. Love you, bye!